Well, good morning and welcome to the funeral service of uh, Mordo MacLeod, affectionately known as the Beda. I'm going to read out a tribute that the family wanted to be read out before we begin our service. Bidan was born in February 1932 to Mordo Narrow and Annie MacLeod and was a brother to Mordo, Babsy and Margaret. People often asked why two brothers were called Mordo and what many don't know is that Bidan was actually supposed to be christened Donald Roderick. But this changed when, as a, young when a young child named Mordo passed away shortly after Bidan was born. Naro and Annie were begged to name the baby after him, which was a common thing at the time. They agreed, and to save confusion between the two modos, the younger brother was called Bidan, which basically means baby modo. Bidan left school at the age of 14 and would help his father out weaving before getting involved in his fishmonger business, selling fish from the back of a van. He was soon driving that van after passing his driving test at the age of 15 because Naro had lied about his age to the driving examiner. <laughs> the test wasn't too hard because Bidan always maintained that uh, his uh, father had given the examiner a backhander or a bottle of whiskey. When Bidan turned 17, he chose the Royal Navy Reserve over national service, as he always had a close connection with the sea after working on his father's boats. This was to lead to a career in the Mergent Navy, where he travelled all over the world. But his favourite destination was always New Zealand, a country he loved so much, and where all Hebridean sailors were welcomed, as there were so many expat islanders living there at the time. Although he thought about moving there, the call of home was always too strong. Bidan would always return home to work during the summer, driving lorries to and from Oog and taking peats home for many of the people in the Point district. During one of those summers home, Bidan was on the bus and spotted a lovely young girl, as he said himself, with black hair and rosy, rosy cheeks, and he went to chat her up. After many knockbacks from the girl, Bidan persistence paid off and she agreed to go out on a date with him to the picture house. That girl was Dolly Frances Macaulay and she went on to become his loving wife for 53 years until her passing in 2015. Dolly wanted to go to Paris on honeymoon, but in his wisdom, Bidan decided that they should go to Blackpool instead. At least the towers were similar. During the honeymoon, he found out that Blackpool Football Club, who were a big team at the time, were playing and asked Dolly if she wanted to go to the game. He was very romantic. <laughs> she declined, but he gave her money and she went and bought herself a lovely green coat, so everybody was happy. After marrying, Bidan gave up his life at sea to be at home with his wife. He took over a mobile butcher business in 1963 and did this until he retired in 1997. Although it was very hard work, Bidan loved his job and liked nothing more than meeting his customers every day, from Chauban Head to Park End. He had a smile for them all and was so well known to everybody in the district. <laughs> Away from work, Point Football Club played a massive part in Bidan's life and he was involved with them for over 80 years, from seeing his first game in 1940s to playing, managing, and being chairman, and becoming one of the infamous Grumblies, a group of the team's staunchest supporters and also their biggest critics. He was still watching the games this season with his old pal Tonkin up until a few weeks ago, and was immensely proud that he got to see his 16-year-old grandson, Daniel, playing regularly and scoring goals for the Reds. Bidan and Dolly had three children, Elaine, Ian Modo and Ross, and they loved how close the siblings have always been, like best friends as well as family. Family meant the world to Bidan, and he, was all, and he always said that there should never be a crossword had between the family something that has stuck strongly with them 
and words they will always follow. He had a son-in-law and two daughters-in-law that he truly loved. He always enjoyed listening to Elaine's husband, Ralph, playing his guitar and singing the party favourite's chicken song. Sadly, Ralph can't be with us, but, it, but he's very much in our thoughts today. He adored his daughter-in-law, Moira and Sandra, even although he always had a put-down for them as they came from back and this. He massively appreciated all that they did for him and spoke very highly of them at every opportunity, and they truly loved him back. Bede and Sister Margaret is the last remembering Bede and Sister Margaret is the last remaining member of the narrow family, and our thoughts are with her in Vancouver, Canada today, and, her, and the three nieces he loved so much over there, Sharon, Michelle, and Jane. He often said they're just the same as us, except that they've got funny accents. <laughs> Bidan had six grandchildren and three great-grandchildren that he absolutely adored. Emma, Sophie, Laura, Alith, Daniel, Luke, Rhys, Cohen, and little Robin, who brought the biggest smile to his face whenever they visited, and he loved spoiling them rotten. They now have a big gap in their lives, <coughs> excuse me, but many happy memories. Bidan was a loving father, father-in-law, uncle, papa, and friend to so many, and he will be sorely missed and always remembered. We're going to begin our worship now by singing in the first psalm that you have in your order of service, Psalm 107, and we're going to sing in Gaelic. And after we sing this psalm, the Reverend James McKeever, who was the Bedans minister for many years, will come up and lead us in prayer. Psalm 107 from verse 23. Woch wangus he jed mur se vis vi gniev in uschir buon. Gaif shut the slayer mur oidr of ye se vier fallen se fuan. Er iort as duschir lechegai gu hard gu dunyamach. Then hoker suas go harsh for porop, or tonun garaf fashech. Ayat geri suas go nev, seris to toin shears. Yunus can tell you an anum truer, le trip was cruels le skis. These three verses, woch wangus age at Murs vis, vi gniev and nishkin puan.
unite now in prayer to God. O oh Lord, our gracious God, we know it is our privilege at all times to worship you. And we know that it is appropriate for us to worship you even in our times of grief. And we thank you, O oh Lord, that we are able to do so today, even though our hearts are filled with sorrow and sadness and a sense of loss. Yet we give thanks that your understanding is set before us in your word. That we are constantly reminded that the Lord, as he looks upon us from his throne on high, is concerned and interested in all our concerns, in all the events of our lives, in all the things that cause us pain and give us happiness. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the privilege today of being able to gather in support of this bereaved family. And we thank you for the sense of uh, support that we give to them, the sense of being able to come and share with them in their time of grief and sorrow. And we thank you that this is still such a feature of our community here. We bless you, O Lord, for the provision that you have made for us, especially in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the worship of your name that goes on in this place and many other places like it, place where Bethan himself was so frequently found as he gathered with the people of God to worship you every Lord's day. And we thank you, O Lord, today for the promises that meet us as we come together to worship you. You have promised always to be in the midst of your people. You have promised to draw near to them. You have promised to make your word effective in their experience, and we pray for that today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it guides our thoughts as we come at times of sorrow uh, into such uh, states of mind as at times are unable to focus as we would like. And yet, Lord, we thank you that your word uh, ever gives us that focus that we need so as to remember you as our God and to realize that we are accountable to you as our creator and thankful to you as the savior of your people. We bless you today, O oh Lord, for Bethan's life. We thank you for the many pleasant memories we have of him, and for the many times that we engaged in happy conversation, for the support that he gave to the gospel here, for the way that he so often frequently made mention to myself of how happy he was to be part of the congregation. And we thank you, O oh Lord, too, for the warmth of the home that he shared with Dolly and for the way in which they were so genuinely welcoming of any time we visited them there. And we give thanks, Lord, for these qualities. And we know that they are precious, Lord, to his family especially, but to so many, many others that came to know Bethan through the course of his life. We thank you for his contribution to this community particularly. We thank you for the various ways in which he engaged with people in the different ways in which he worked, uh, while beginning in the f selling of, of fish and through to his time as a butcher. We give thanks for the respect in which he was held and for the way that he genuinely cared for people and for uh, the way in which he sought to help them from day to day in different ways practically. And we thank you too, O oh Lord, for his family and pray that you would bless them here and those who are not able to be here as they mourn Bethan's passing, we thank you for all that he was to them, and for his genuine love and care for them, and for the way that he so felt so rightly proud of them, and for the way that he spoke of them so frequently as his beloved family. We pray, O oh Lord, as they mourn his passing, that you'd be pleased today to draw near to them, to bless them and to comfort them, to encourage and to console them and to give them, Lord, the strength they need at this time as they deal with the, uh, with, uh, the effects of Bethan's passing from their midst. We pray for Elaine and for Ralph. We pray for Gogo and Moira. Uh, we pray, O oh Lord, too, for Ross and Sandra. I uh, pray for their children, all the grandchildren, all the great-grandchildren. We commend them to you, O oh Lord, as one who, miss, who will miss such a beloved father and father-in-law and papa. We pray too for his sister, Margaret, in Canada, 
asking that you be near to her, Lord, at such a distance from this service of worship, and yet so close in her thoughts and in her memories at this time. Bless her, we pray, and all her family there too, her nephews and nieces. We pray that you would graciously provide for them, O Lord, as only you can. We ask your blessing for this congregation, this community, that be them so loved. And we pray that your blessing in the gospel will continue and even increasingly be their portion. And we do ask, O oh Lord, that as uh, uh, from week to week your people gather in worship here in this district, uh, so you'd be pleased to show yourself as a gracious God to them. And provide with us, Lord, we pray, the, the blessings in the gospel that we need, so that we too will be prepared for the end of our course in this life. Lord, may it be for us that we will truly come to uh, avail ourselves savingly of the provision you make for us in the gospel. And graciously grant your blessing now. Continue to bless your servant here as he ministers to this congregation. And grant to him, O Lord, that the Holy Spirit may use his services to the end of many being saved. Receive our thanks, we pray now. Pardon our sins and cleanse us for Jesus' sake. going to read God's word first of all from the Old Testament scriptures in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The, Lord's works, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. <coughs> and we're going to read from the New Testament scriptures in Paul's letter to the Romans at chapter 8. There is therefore no, con no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, 
But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, who, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. I'm now going to ask the Reverend Colin MacLeod, whose father was uh, Muduwalik MacLeod, a first cousin of the Beatles, to come up and lead us in prayer. Well, you today as a family are very much in our thoughts, our prayers, and our hearts. Let us bow together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you this time seeking your face, seeking your presence, longing for your grace, your mercy, and your peace. And we pray, Lord, as we gather together with Beaton's family today, that you would especially be near to them, and that they would know that great reality and promise of the Scripture that underneath are the everlasting arms. For you are a God who is wondrous in might, glorious in power, and amazing in grace. And so, Lord, as we gather together today, we seek that grace for them. We thank you that we can come here in, at this time such as this, and in doing so, we remember how the disciples responded to pressure and difficulty in their lives, when Jesus said to them, will you also turn away from me? And they said, to whom else shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. May that reality and understanding and realization mark each one of us here together today. That as we gather with Beaton's family, seeking your mercy for them and your comfort to be with them, as they mourn the loss of someone who was so near and dear to them. To so many here in this community and across the island, today we have lost a friend, but the family have lost so much more. And so, Lord, we pray for them, that your grace and mercy would undertake for them. We think of that wonderful psalm that's already been sung here today that would have been known to seafarers such as Beaton down through the generations. The storm has changed into a calm that is command and will so that the waves that raged before now quiet are and still. We would seek, Lord, that stillness together here today. We would seek that place of worship and recognition, that we would be still and know that you are God. Once more, Lord, we gathered with a family to offer our prayers and to offer our re respects, to offer our comfort, to offer our support, for here again we are gathered in the valley of the shadow of death. Once more we are being reminded of our own frailty that we do not have forever. That there is a time appointed unto all. And that there is a time coming where either death will find us or the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and Lord we pray that we might seek to be ready for that time above all. And we thank you and give thanks that that's a message that beat and heard all his life a message of grace, a message of forgiveness, declared in the gospel of Jesus Christ, who in his mercy says to each and every one, come to me and I will give you rest. We thank you for that wonderful message, that great invitation from our wonderful Savior, who stays closer than a brother, who calls sinners to repentance. Indeed, he was criticized. He was abused. He was maligned. He was degraded, he was despised and rejected and humiliated because he was and is the friend of sinners. 
how his critics loved to point out his faults, how his enemies rounded on him for seeking out the lost and the marginalized, but that is our amazing saviour, that is amazing grace. And so we thank you, Lord, today that we meet in the light of that gospel, a gospel that the disciples would reflect upon in later years and say we beheld his glory, but also they beheld his grace, his touch, his compassion, his tenderness, his love, his patience, his long-suffering, his goodness, his gentleness. They saw him in, at his best in prayer. They saw him at his most glorious in drawing sinners to himself. They saw him in agony on the cross. Then they saw him again that first Easter day, that death could not hold him, and death would not have the final say over Jesus of Nazareth. And Lord, we remember today that death will not have the last say over any of us who were beaten or any of us gathered here today. For that last word will belong to Christ, the righteous judge who calls us to an account, who calls us to meet with him. And we thank you that while we think of that scene of the great throne room, of the judgment seat, we thank you for the one who sits on that seat, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And so, Lord, in your mercy, remember us all today and bless to our hearts the truth of this wonderful gospel and the reality of a risen Saviour who offers us peace and solace by the Holy Spirit. And may it please you, Lord, that the Spirit himself would move in the hearts and keep the minds of this family here together, to, especially today. We remember those who can't be here the family members who couldn't travel, those who are far away but are able to join through live stream. Lord, be near to them. And may they each and every one know your peace that comes and passes all understanding that guards hearts and minds. And so, Lord, as we go from here, we would ask for that understanding of heart to look beyond this place, to look beyond the coffin, to look beyond the grave, to look to Christ, the one who is altogether lovely, the one who came into this world to seek and to save the lost, the one who gave himself a ransom for many, the one who laid down his life for his friends. So, Lord, be with us. Bless this family and undertake for each one of us here today. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. Well, as we've heard and as we all know, Bethan was highly respected by everybody that knew him. But one has come for him who had no respect for Bethan or for any of us. Death. He doesn't make an appointment with us to see if it's convenient for him to come and take us away from the scene of time. And he will come at our appointed time to bring us to an appointment that not one of us will be late for, to the judgment seat of Christ. But death has got respect for Christ because Christ overcame him. And that's the one that we would commend the family and all of you here to today. Because as we read there, if we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be no condemnation our spirits will go immediately into his father's house to be with him forever, to await the glorious resurrection where we will receive a glorified body. <coughs> so we would commend you all, if you haven't yet come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to do so whilst you're still here on mercy's ground, because this is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Think about it. Are we ready for this appointment? Because he will not respect us. He will come at the appointed time to take us away. We're going to conclude by singing to God's praise in Psalm number 23. The whole of the psalm. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by.
the whole of the psalm, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to run. The Lord's my shepherd, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll respects to him there. So if you notice that the cars have stopped, then be patient for a few seconds whilst uh, the hearse resumes its journey to the cemetery. There will also be tea and refreshments served at in its duty after the interment, and you're all warmly invited to join with the family there. The family would like to thank everyone who's attended the service today and all who have been in touch with them over the last few days by texts, phones and cards and so forth. They want to also thank the staff at the hospital and Bethesda for the care that Modo Bethan received since he became ill. And there's a collection taken on the way out and possibly some of you put it in on the way in for Bethesda Hospice. These are all the intimation. Let us stand for the benediction. Our gracious and ever blessed God, we come before you to give thanks for the many tokens of goodness that you show to us every day of our lives. We give you thanks for the refreshments that are going to be served at Unit's duty after the interment. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless it to the physical needs of our bodies. 
that you would help us to use these bodies to your own glory. And now may you be pleased to bless us with your own love, the love of our Father, the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you all, now and forevermore. Thank you. 